Hi, I'm Mike. In this talk, I provide an intuitive and simple description of the design and analysis of LT codes, one that I haven't seen before. First, a quick review of erasure codes. In general, there is a block of source data that is to be reliably transferred from a sender to a receiver. The source data is partitioned into equal sized pieces called symbols. Hereafter, we let K denote the number of source symbols. Erasure encoding is applied to the source symbols to generate encoded symbols, where each encoded symbol is the same size as the source symbol. Encoded symbols are placed into packets with a header and transmitted over a network to a receiver, where some packet loss may occur between the sender and the receiver. At the receiver, whatever encoded symbols arrive in packets are used to recover the original source symbols using erasure decoding. Ideally, an erasure code has the property that the K source symbols can be recovered if at least K encoder symbols are received. <clears throat> Copy encoding is a very simple way of encoding. At each step, a random source symbol is chosen. That source symbol is copied to the encoder symbol. The encoder symbol is placed into a packet with a header, and the packet is sent. This simple process is repeated independently for each encoded symbol. Copy decoding consists of collecting the received encoding symbols and setting up a graph between the encoded symbols and the source symbols to be recovered. This graph can be set up based on the headers in the received encoded symbol packets. The decoding process itself is very simple. For each received encoded symbol, its neighboring source symbol can be immediately recovered by just copying the encoded symbol to the source symbol. Unfortunately, there may be other encoded symbols which have that same source symbol as a neighbor, in which case those encoded symbols are useless because the source symbol that they can recover has already been recovered. So this adds to reception overhead. In this case, the two additional encoded symbols that can recover the same source symbol are useless. The recovery process is repeated until all source symbols are recovered. Note that all source symbols can be recovered if each source symbol has at least one encoded symbol neighbor, but in general this occurs when many source symbols have many encoded symbol neighbors, causing a lot of reception overhead. A simple analysis of copy decoding based on the coupon collector problem is that the, number, the expected number of encoded symbols needed to recover k source symbols is k times the harmonic sum of 1 over i from i equals 1 to k, which is approximately k times the natural log of k. The reception overhead for copy decoding is pretty bad, i.e. it is k times log k minus k. For example, if k equals 20,000, then the expected amount of data that needs to arrive at the receiver to recover the source data is approximately 10 times the size of the source data, which is pretty horrible. Copy decoding complexity is k times log k, which is okay, not great, not bad. LT codes are a practical realization of a digital fountain. For example, suppose we have a digital image, which is the source data, that is to be transmitted from a sender to a receiver. LT encoding at the sender can be used to generate encoded symbols from the digital image that are placed into packets and sent to the receiver. Some of the packets may be lost along the way, and some are received. It doesn't matter which packets are lost. All that matters is that enough packets arrive at the receiver to recover the original image, where enough is the size of the image. In many ways, this is analogous to the properties of a water fountain. LT encoding is very simple. A key concept is a probability distribution on the degrees of encoded symbols. The design of this encoded symbol degree distribution is the key to make LT codes work well, and I'll discuss this design in more detail later. For now, we assume that the encoded symbol degree distribution is given. The degree distribution assigns a probability to each possible encoded symbol degree i.e. p sub 1 is the probability and encoded symbols of degree 1, p sub 2 is the probability that an encoded symbols of degree 2, etc. Thus, each probability is greater than or equal to 0, and the probabilities sum up to 1. LT encoding is very simple. 
For each encoded symbol, a degree is chosen randomly according to the degree distribution. For example, degree 2 is chosen for the encoded symbol with probability p sub 2. In this case, two random source symbols are chosen and XORed together to generate the encoded symbol. The encoded symbol can be put into a packet, a packet header is added, and the packet is sent. This process is repeated independently for each encoded symbol. For example, Degree 1 is chosen for the next encoded symbol with probability p sub 1. In this case, LT encoding is the same as copy encoding, i.e. a source symbol is chosen at random and the encoded symbol is a copy of that source symbol. As another example, degree 4 is chosen for the next encoded symbol with probability p sub 4. In this case, four random source symbols are chosen and XOR together to generate the encoded symbol. LT decoding is also really simple. Similar to copy decoding, the graph between the received encoded symbols and the source symbols to be recovered is set up based on the headers in the received encoded symbol packets. Encoded symbols of degree 1 are processed until there are no remaining such symbols. Processing an encoded symbol of degree 1 consists of copying the encoded symbol into its neighboring source symbol and then XORing the neighboring source symbol into all neighboring encoded symbols of that source symbol. This reduces the degree of each encoded symbol neighbor of the source symbol by 1. Processing continues until either all source symbols are recovered, i.e. successful decoding, or until there are no remaining encoded symbols of degree 1, but there are still unrecovered source, source symbols, i.e. unsuccessful decoding. For the example shown, the process ends in successful decoding. In practice, there are more advanced decoding algorithms that can succeed even when LT decoding fails, but that is beyond the scope of this presentation. A key goal of the LT degree distribution design is that the average encoded symbol degree is small, which ensures that encoding and decoding are fast. Another key goal is that the reception overhead is small. Ideally, LT decoding has zero reception overhead, i.e. the number of encoded symbols needed to successfully decode is equal to the number of source symbols. What causes this not to happen are collisions, which are bad. Collisions are when multiple encoded symbols of degree 1 recover the same source symbol. Each collision causes an increase in reception overhead, and collisions are likely to occur if multiple encoded symbols of degree 1 are concurrently ready to be processed at the same time. This is exactly what happens with copy decoding, where all encoded symbols are degree 1 and are thus ready to be processed at the beginning, and so there are massive numbers of collisions. This leads to the one-at-a-time principle where ideally there is always exactly one encoded symbol of degree 1 ready to be processed at any point in time, in which case collisions are impossible. Let's take the one at a time principle as given and see how we can use that to design and analyze what the degree distribution should be assuming ideal LT decoding. Ideal LT decoding is when at each step of processing the actual random behavior of LT decoding is modeled to act according to the expected behavior of LT decoding. We let k be the total number of received encoded symbols used to decode the k source symbols. We start initially with an encoded symbol degree distribution where the encoded symbol degree probabilities for degrees 2 and above are unknown, i.e. p sub 2, p sub 3, p sub 4, etc. are initially unknown. However, from the one at a time principle, we know initially there is exactly one encoded symbol of degree 1. Consider processing the encoded symbol of degree 1 to recover its neighboring source symbol. At this point, there are zero encoded symbols of degree 1. To restore the one at a time principle, the expected number of encoded symbols of degree 2 that reduce to degree 1 due to the recovery of the source symbol must be exactly 1. The expected number is simply the probability a particular encoded symbol of degree 2 has the recovered source symbol as a neighbor times the number of encoded symbols of degree 2. The probability that a particular encoded symbol of degree 2 has the recovered source symbol as a neighbor is exactly 2 over k, and the number of encoded symbols of degree 2 is p sub 2 times k. 
Setting the product of these two quantities to 1 and solving yields p sub 2 equals 1 half. So we set p sub 2 equals 1 half, and then in expectation, the number of encoder symbols of degree 2 goes from 1 half times k to 1 half times k minus 1 after processing. And there is again exactly one encoder symbol of degree 1. However, after the processing, we want the number of encoder symbols of degree 2 to be 1 half times k minus 1 half to establish that the expected number of degree 2 encoder symbols is exactly 1 half of the remaining k minus 1 encoder symbols. To achieve this, we need the expected number of encoder symbols of degree 3 that reduce to degree 2 due to the recovery of the source symbol to be 1 half, so that the expected number of encoder symbols of degree 2 after processing is exactly 1 half of the remaining k minus 1 encoder symbols. Solving the same sort of simple equations as before, we see that p3 needs to be 1 6. Then after processing, the expected number of encoded symbols of degree 3 becomes 1 6 times k minus 1 half, whereas we want the number to be 1 6 times k minus 1 6 to reestablish that the expected number of encoded symbols of degree 3 is exactly 1 6 of the remaining k minus 1 encoded symbols. Similar to the reasoning above, this leads to the same sort of simple equations as before, where we see that p4 needs to be 1 12. Continuing this analysis through the higher degrees, we get this very simple and intuitive explanation of what the degree distribution should be for ideal LT decoding. In expectation, the flow of encoded symbols to lower degrees is self-replicating process in the sense that the probabilities of encoded symbols of degree 2 and higher are exactly the same in each step of a decoding process where k is replaced by k minus 1. Furthermore, the one at a time principle holds an expectation at each processing step. Also, it is easy to see that p sub i is simply 1 over the quantity i times i minus 1 for degrees i greater than or equal to 2. The ideal LT decoding analysis shows that the expected number of encoded symbols needed to recover the k source symbols is exactly k. The expected number of edges to recover the k source symbols is exactly the same as it was for copy decoding. Thus, the reception overhead for ideal LT decoding is zero, which is excellent, and the decoding complexity is k times log k. This is an analysis of ideal LT decoding or at each step we assume exactly the expected behavior occurs. In practice, variances from expectation make actual LT decoding operate differently, and thus tweaks are needed to adjust the degree distribution to be able to achieve reasonable reception overheads. However, the ideal LT decoding analysis does give the intuitive insight into the design of the degree distribution and why LT codes work well. In practice, LT codes are fundamental to the design of more advanced fountain codes. The Raptor Q code specified in IETF RFC 6330 is the most advanced fountain codes. The Raptor implementations of the Raptor Q code can achieve linear time encoding and decoding and can generate an essentially unlimited number of encoded symbols on the fly. Raptor Q is a systematic code, which means that the source symbols are also encoded symbols which is important for many applications. RaptorQ also has essentially zero reception overhead. The most comprehensive description of the RaptorQ code design is given in the reference below. The design includes a large number of technical components that are not part of the LT codes design. So RaptorQ is a huge advance over LT codes. I'm part of a company, BitRipple, that enables large-scale data distribution over challenged networks based on a high-performance implementation of Raptor Q. Please visit our website and please follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you.